Welcome to the Avail Podcast, where we dig deep and talk about the art of leadership. My name is Virgil Sierra, and today we're sitting down with Renee Hill Carter. Renee is an award-winning author, certified grief recovery method specialist, and an inspirational speaker. Today, we're discussing her latest book, What About Me? Staying Healthy and Whole While You're Helping Others. So lean in, leaders, and let's get started. Welcome back, everybody, to another Avail podcast episode where we dig deep and talk about the art of leadership. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Virgil Sierra. I'm the lead pastor of Vertical Church, a.k.a. Iglesia Vertical, here in South Florida. We are one church, two languages. And I have this huge responsibility to be the host for the Avail podcast, where we sit down on a weekly basis and connect with a leader who is making an impact in their community and for the kingdom. And today we are sitting down with Renee Hill Carter, my sister in Christ, who has a message on her heart for all of us. We're going to be talking about uh, her book, What About Me? Staying Healthy and Whole While You're Helping Others. But before we do that, we're going to get to know her a little bit. Renee, how does it feel to be here on the Avail podcast? Well, Virgil, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me as a guest. I am just delighted. And uh, I do want to convey my thanks also to Dr. Chan and the entire Avail team Mm. for inviting me. I'm honored. Yes, ma'am. And we are honored that you would sit with us. I'm looking forward to just kind of um, learning from you together with our Avail audience, specifically connected to your book, What About Me? We're going to get to to that in a minute. But before we do so, it's always great to start off just getting to know a little bit about our guests. So can you just tell us in a couple minutes, who is Renee Hill Carter? Oh, who is she? (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, first of all, I am... uh, a wife. I'm a mother of uh, three adult children, two grandchildren. Um, I was born, I'll I'll go back to the beginning, uh, and then I'll come back up again to uh, present. Uh, I was born in the beautiful, beautiful mountainous state of West Virginia, Mm -hmm. particularly Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, I am the uh, third and the quote unquote, baby, the youngest of three girls, uh, grew up in a very loving home, uh, mother, father, uh, two older sisters. Uh, we, we had a home that was built on uh, faith, mm. family, love, education, education that was stressed in our home. Mm. Not perfect, not by any means, but uh, when I think about home, I just get such a warm, comforting feeling. So I was blessed with that. Um, my parents, you know, had us involved in a lot of things in the community, in the school. We were very active in our church. Mm. Um, actually, we could see the church. Our house was at one end of Mulberry Street. <laughs> And we could look at the church at the other end Mm. of Mulberry Street. So we could walk to church. Um, Church was another extension of family, uh, community. It was just absolutely wonderful. I learned so much. And I love God. You know, I had this this love of God. So I was was one of those, I guess you would call one of those church girls. Uh, Love God. You know, went to church. We were involved in everything. Um, I, however, was not saved until I was an adult. Mm. Uh, Church girl, new church, uh, but really, really, really accepted the Lord uh, when I was adult, after I was married Mm. and had my children. So uh, that was blessed. But I'm so thankful for the background, uh, for the foundation, shall I say, the the foundation that my parents gave. Um, As I said, education was very important. went to college. Uh, All three of us uh, went to the same college, Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia. Go Pirates, (laughs) I must say that. (laughs) And uh, it was just absolutely wonderful. I uh, met my husband, my husband, Bill, uh, of 50 years, 50 years. Yes, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. And I thank God for that. But I met Bill uh, when he, I was a freshman and he was on his way to Vietnam, to Vietnam. So um, 
He went to Vietnam for the one year. He came back and we resumed our relationship. Um, of course, things had changed mm-hmm. as far as he was concerned. But, you know, at that time, I, I didn't know anything about that. didn't know anything about, you know, what war actually did, particularly the Vietnam wow. War. But at any rate, um, my senior year, Bill and I got married. And uh, then uh, I graduated on time with my class. Uh, We started moving around a lot. We were trying to find ourselves. Uh, The children came quickly. We have three children, as I said before. And so the children came quickly. Um, The uh, challenges of marriage uh, was on us and being so young and really not knowing, you know, there was no premarital counseling like we have today. <laughs> uh, so we, oh, we were just in love, you know, and that was it. So um, just didn't have any um, counseling. That wasn't the vogue mm-hmm. then. Uh, even church, it wasn't. Uh, so we just had to kind of make it, you know, on our own. So we did have challenges, but God kept mm. us. The grace of God kept us. Um, I did uh, work in corporate um, for a total of 17 years. I worked back then. I am dating myself. and uh, But back then it was Southern Bell. I worked for the phone company. Yeah. And I was, uh, in, yes, I was in management with the phone company um, for 17 years. Now I think it's it's full circle. Now I think it's it was Southern Bell, Bell South Communications, AT&T, Mm-hmm. You know, Ma Bell. So we're back to Ma Bell. But 17 years I did that, took an early out, as we call it. So early retirement. <clears throat> and then after that, I uh, went to work on staff at my church, mm. at my church for 20 years. Um, so, and then there were a lot of things that happened in between, but that that's the uh, Cliff Notes version. That's great. <laughs> and I and I understand um that you obviously, you know, all of us who come to work at church at some point, uh, we do a lot of things, <laughs> but, I, but, I know that, yes. but I know that also in your journey, um, you really learned a lot about dealing with people and helping people uh, in addition to serving mm-hmm. your pastors and serving the church. Um, I want to talk about mm-hmm. your book. Um, your your okay. book, I think is something that, that, all of every person would benefit from. We we have a, a an mm-hmm. audience of leaders here at Avail, leaders who lead a lot of people, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think it'll be great to talk about your book uh, specifically. It's entitled "What About Me: Staying Healthy and Whole mm-hmm. While You're Helping Others." Talk to us. How, what what's the heart behind this book, and and how did it come come alive inside of you? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, actually. The book was birthed out of a conversation I had with Dr. Sam (laughs) Chan. (laughs) Dr. Chan would come to our church and do leadership trainings. Oh, he he was just absolutely wonderful. And uh, I was the executive coordinator to the senior pastor. And uh, he and Dr. Chan were great friends. And so that's how I met Dr. Chan. And so... um, I was also working on my master's in Christian counseling at the time, Mm. and it was time for me to do my thesis. And I was trying to, you know, how it is you're trying to, you know, determine, okay, what's my title? What's my subject? What am I going to do here? So I had picked the, the, the subject matter and I was talking with Dr. Chan in the, uh, what we call the ready room, uh, before. And, uh, I was, he was asking me, okay, what are you doing? You know, so I told him what was going on. And he said something uh, that really clicked with me as far as what I really was going to write about. And so um, he said, oh, I know, he said, um, talking about how pastors sometimes can be crippled by their sermons because they can be so they have to be careful how they deliver their sermons. For example, if they're talking about marriage Mm -hmm. and they give an example of a couple who's having some marital issues and 
he's not naming names. He's not really thinking about that particular couple, sure. but this is just something that maybe a lot of couples go through. And so the example that pastor gives, well, it fits with <laughs> a couple in the congregation who's at church. And so they just believe that that pastor talking is talking about them. About them. Mm-hmm. And has put their business <laughs> all out in the congregation. And so we were talking about that, you know, and, and the emotional health of the pastor and all of that. And so I said, oh, that is just so interesting. So I said, I want to know more about that. And so I said, well, the thought came to me, Dr. Chan, may I interview you for my thesis? Uh-huh. And, you know, he's so gracious. He said, of course you can, you know. So I did. I interviewed him and I loved it. I said, oh, this is perfect. And I asked my thesis advisor if that would uh, suffice for, I didn't want to do a survey. I didn't want to do all of that. And she said, oh, that is perfect. That is wonderful. So I did that and then um, got my uh, degree, thesis, all of that. There was some grief within that uh, while I was working, but um, got it. And then I said, okay, so many years later, I wanted to swing back and talk to Dr. Chan some more to find out if the things that we talked about in the interview and in my thesis, okay, what is the state of and the health of the pastors and biblical uh, soul care providers then? Because the title was, let me tell you the title, The Biblical Counselor a healthy profile of the soul care provider in the 21st century church. So we talked a lot about emotional health. And so I wanted to come back around. He agreed, I guess it was about nine years later. And uh, so we talked some more and the thought for a book came to me at that time. And I said, I like the interview style. I want to know more about the health of leaders the emotional health of leaders. A lot of times we focus on the spiritual, which we should, but oftentimes we might neglect yep. the emotional and the mental well-being. Uh, we can do pretty good with the body. We still have to deal with sure. that. So I said, I, I need to write a book and I want to hear from other people. And I like this interview style. And so that's how What About Me came about. Great story. And, and, and man, what, what, uh, what great insight I'm sure you received from Dr. Chand, who, you know, who's always been very connected to high level leaders, spiritual leaders, pastors, Mm -hmm. people who are providing care uh, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I love the story. I love how it came to life. Now, now the title, what about me? Um, There's an implication Mm -hmm. there. There's an implication. I could be wrong, but there's an implication that sometimes we're so focused on caring for others well, mm-hmm. what about me? <laughs> and I think that that's a that's challenge. Right. I mean, as a pastor, sometimes I find myself talking to my wife and saying, mm-hmm. um, man, we're always so focused on helping others through what they're going through that it could easily come at the cost mm-hmm. of of my own health as a leader or our own mm-hmm. health as a marriage. Um, talk to us a little bit about mm-hmm. that. I mean, I, I imagine that's maybe the heart of where the title came from. But uh, do you see this mm-hmm. as a pattern where people who are leaders, even pastors or providing soul care and help mm-hmm. can sometimes neglect mm-hmm. this? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, the book is not a judgment. Mm-hmm. It may sound like it, but it's not a judgment. It's not uh, an accusation, but it's a wake up. It's a uh, alarm, Mm -hmm. if you will, in case you are running so fast and thinking that you're the only one who can do certain things. Now, we do know with the calling and since we're talking about pastors and we're talking about um, other faith leaders and ministers and teachers, chaplains, Mm -hmm. uh, all of that, um, we may feel that because of the call that God has on my life, that I'm the one who has to be responsible for everything and everybody. And so with that, we can be consumed with everybody else, but we don't put our own oxygen mask on. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, there's burnout, there is um, 
emotional, there's mental distress, and especially Virgil, um, after the pandemic, Mm. after the pandemic, I think the pandemic was um, apocalyptic in nature because there was an uncovering and there was an exposing of everything in our our world. Um, It was pandemonium Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it caused grief. It really did. Uh, It also caused us to take a look at certain things and determine, am I being the best me that I can be? And my concern is that many times, um, since we're talking pastors and we're talking yeah. leaders, and we're, I, I want to open it up because it's not this book is not just yeah. for pastors, but it's about leaders. <laughs> it's about leaders. Whether you're in the marketplace, yeah. you're you know a leader in your home, you're a leader in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can neglect, and we're running so fast, and we're so in a hurry to win. We're in a hurry to win. We want to be the best leader that we can be. And so we're, 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 we're going to conferences and, and we're, we're having events at our church and or we're having, you know, all kinds of things where we are supposedly helping other people, but we're just burning ourselves out. Um, one thing that, oh, just really, really, really has me um, in a space is the um, the incidences of mental health, yeah. um, mental disorders in the pulpit, wow. <laughs> in leaders, and they're denying it sometimes, not wanting to admit to it. Why? Because they may feel that they have no safe space. Mm-hmm. They have no safe place to really, really talk about their, oh, and this is the F word, their feelings, <laughs> their true <laughs> feelings. Uh, I think sometimes as Christian leaders, um, if we dare express our true feelings and let it be known, we might be perceived as having no faith. Mm-hmm. Oh, aren't you stronger than that? You're supposed to be stronger than that. And especially if somebody's coming to you for help and you are just so busted mm-hmm. and so broke. You know, if I can use that term, Um, but you're, 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 I'll say perpetrating Mm -hmm. that you've got it all together when you're just melting inside. And, you know, even with the the high incidence of people who may come to you, maybe because they lost a loved one or, and they lost a loved one to COVID, they lost a loved one to suicide. There's such an escalation of suicide with our children, with young adults, and with leaders, with leaders. And that's a frightening thing. It really is. But to be able to have that leader realize that it is indeed God ordained that you take care of yourself. I, I love Psalm 139. I look at Psalm 139 as an anthem to my book, Mm -hmm. What About Me? Because everything in Psalm 39 talks about just the awesomeness and the beauty with which God's hands crafted us. Mm. And he made us perfect. He made us marvelous. He said marvelous are, you know, his works and that we should know very, very well. And then that psalm begins, everything's in that psalm, the sovereignty of God, the awesomeness of God, uh, the the altogether loveliness of God, the all otherness of God. Um, But also God saying to us, because in the, I I can use it as a prayer, Mm -hmm. because when it opens up, it says, you know, Lord, you searched me and known me. You know my down sitting, you know my uprising, you know my thoughts, even before I think them, you know everything about mm. me. And then it goes on through and talks about just the awesomeness. I can't get away from you, God. You're everywhere. You know, you are everything that I need. And then talks again, of course, you know, 
marvelously, I mean, wondrously and marvelously made, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Then at the end, at the end, repeats. And he says, search me, know me, try my thoughts, try my anxieties, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and then lead me in the way everlasting. Mm. So that means that sometimes God has to do some um, heart surgery. Mm. He has to do some heart surgery. He has to open us up and point out some things that might be clogging the free flow of his love through us to other people. And so he might have to do some surgery, might have to put some heart stents in there. He might have to do all kinds of things. But the key is, is that we allow God to do it. And then once he does it and he points out certain things that need to be dealt with, our thing is, will we obey? Will we allow him? Will we take the prescription that he orders? First of all, will we go, as 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 older folk used to say, and I have to watch that because people might say <laughs> that I'm old folk, right? <laughs> but old folks used to say, I know in my community, go under the knife. Yep. That means have surgery, go under the knife. And what he will do is use, of course, we know, his word mm-hmm. to perform the scalp of his word to perform that surgery that's needed so that we can take that inward journey and see if there's anything in there that's preventing. And so that comes into soul self care. Soul self care. Yeah, I love that. Soul self care. Um, here's what I want to do. Um, in, in a moment, I want to ask you for maybe some some practical tips. And I, and I know this, there's probably some, a lot of nuggets and wisdom in your book, which I want to encourage everybody to get. We'll talk about that a little bit ahead as well. And and I will ask for some Mm -hmm. practical tips for soul soul self-care. But before that, can you just touch Mm -hmm. on some of the common symptoms or some, some of the, the common, um, signs that we mm-hmm. should keep an eye out for that may be signs of emotional unhealth, maybe signs mm-hmm. of I'm not managing or handling these things uh, in a healthy way because there's always signs and symptoms mm-hmm. that lead before a breakdown that lead before a, um, uh, an emotional or even mental crisis in our lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you talk a little bit about mm-hmm. some, what are some of those signs or things that people should keep an eye for, eye out for? Whether you're an innovator in ministry, business, or your community, Avail Plus is designed to take you to the next level. What is Avail Plus? It's an exclusive leadership resource that offers access to brand new premium resources like books, study guides, and masterclasses. It's a chance to connect with other leaders on live calls and classes. It's early access access to materials no one else has held in their hands. It's the catalyst to your next season of growth as a leader. To find out more about how you can become a member of Avail Plus, head over to theartofleadership.com forward slash avail dash plus. Great question. I think that when we don't want to talk about Mm -hmm our feelings with anyone. That's good. With anyone. Or if we talk to somebody, we will give the impression that all is well. There is a phrase that people use, and and I must say, and I hope I don't offend anybody, but I must say, I don't like to hear it. Oh, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you're blessed. Oh, but darling, you are stressed. (laughs) We're all dealing with stress at some level just by the fact that we live in this world and particularly the fact that we are still dealing with the most horrendous worldwide event of this pandemic. COVID Mm -hmm. and everything that came with it, then that's adding Mm -hmm. a huge layer 
her of already uh, a stressed out life just by simply living yeah. from day to day. Um, so when you perhaps don't really feel like feel like that there's nobody that you can talk to. Uh, so you're just going to go ahead and you're going to fake it till you yep. make it. Yeah. And when you feel that nobody can do what you do, <laughs> so therefore you don't take the necessary rest. You don't take the necessary sabbatical. You don't take the necessary wow. hiatus. You, you just don't because you feel like, well, nobody can do this. Nobody can do this. And I think about, um, you know, the story that we're all familiar with, um, Moses, mm -hmm. when his father-in-law was telling him, his father-in-law, Jethro, was telling him the thing that you're doing is not good because it's not good for you and it's not good for the That's people. Right. People were lined up because Moses was trying to deal with everybody's <laughs> issues. <laughs> And so God, Jethro, tell him, look, look, get you some people who can help you out, you know. And it reminds me of Dr. Chan's uh, book, Who's Holding Your Ladder, you know, the ladder series. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it reminds me of that. And so when that doesn't happen, um, when you don't recognize the need, and nor do you understand the need for working through and dealing with not only your grief, and loss, uh -huh. but the people's grief and loss. Yeah. And and I, I'm one thing I, I didn't say, I am a grief recovery method specialist. Mm -hmm. um, I even was teaching some classes on grief before I became a specialist uh, back at the church. And I was uh, doing lay counseling, you know, in addition to being the executive coordinator. So I was real, real, real busy, mm -hmm. but I was all always so concerned about people's feelings and how they really, really were. Okay. So the grief and the loss is just a tremendous thing. I have heard so many different pastors talk about, and I'm moving into grief a lot, talk about the number of funerals that they have performed wow. COVID. Yeah. And I mean, I was hearing it from this pastor and they were making a point. And then I was listening to another pastor and they were making a point. And then the other one too. And I'm going, okay. So in my mind, because I'm a visual person, I saw a parade of caskets. I saw a parade of caskets coming through the church and out of the church, a revolving door of caskets. But the thing Virgil is that there were relationships and people connected to those caskets that were grieving. And not only that, but the pastor and the leaders of the church who were there to do the eulogy, were there to serve and all of that. Okay, how is that affecting that pastor? Mm. All of these parade of caskets and the relationships that go with the caskets. And that's one thing that we have to understand and not neglect and that is the relationships that are attached to grief and loss. And so a lot of times we'll do a great funeral and we'll go and visit the person and we'll say kind words and do kind words. And then when the funeral is over and everybody has gone to their respective places and gone back to their lives, well, that person is still left with the loss. Mm. And I know with, um, uh, grief recovery method, we learned that there are over 40 losses, not just the loss of a loved one through death, but broken relationships, yeah. loss of trust, loss of safety. Look at our schools, look at our children, look at our world where we don't feel as safe as we used to. Yeah. Whoever heard of a mass shooting in a school? Whoever heard of a mass shooting mm -hmm. in a, my God, a church, God's house, wow. a mass shooting in the mall where you go to shop and relax and have fun, a mass shooting in a movie theater. Everything has been impacted. That leader, that pastor must come to grips. If And many are. Again, I'm not accusing. Sure. <laughs> many are. I just want to. I'll say it. I'll um, say it. Many aren't. 
So many are, but many aren't. <laughs> there are. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> From the mouth of a pastor, one who should know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so that that's my heart. That's my heartbeat is to help people, first of all, to understand that grief is a normal and a natural reaction mm-hmm. to a loss of any kind, of any kind. And it's also one of the most misunderstood emotions. Grief is also, it's dynamic. It, it moves. It has rhythm. Um, it has energy. It, it, it demands a lot of emotional energy, not only for the person who is grieving, but also the people who are around the griever. And so that's all of us. All of us, Virgil, are grievers at one time or another. Yeah, we are all grievous, and we learn too. And um, my 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 next book is going to deal with the fact that grief is God ordained. Grief grief work. Let me say that grief work and getting counseling, getting help with working through it. It's God ordained, um, and God grieves. And we, we talk about that in What About Me as well in one of the chapters. Yeah, this is this is a great – I'm so happy we're talking about this. I want to I want to bring up um, something about your book and, and, and even your master classes, because, which is connected – the master class video is connected to your book. We'll talk about mm-hmm. that as well. But one of the things that you su- – okay. one of the things you suggest is that every soul care provider needs a soul care provider. And can you just touch yes. on that? Can you just touch on that specifically? Because I think some of us need to hear this. Again, mm-hmm. many are seeking out help and realizing mm-hmm. this is important, helpful, mm-hmm. but many are not, whether it's, mm-hmm. hey, I wasn't taught that or, or you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. isn't a pastor supposed to have enough relationship with God to not really need somebody else? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. why, why do you suggest this, right? That every soul care provider needs a soul care provider. Every, let's frame it this way. Every pastor Mm -hmm. needs a pastor. Every teacher needs a teacher. Every mentor needs a mentor. Every counselor, every therapist, every psychiatrist needs a therapist, mm-hmm. a counselor. Every coach needs a coach. Um, we say uh, in in the in the world of counsel, and it's uh, actually Natasha Stewart, who is the uh, uh, head of behavioral health and counseling at the Potter's House. Uh, she she didn't uh, this didn't originate with her, but she emphasized it. She said, "It's okay." to talk to Jesus and a therapist. (laughs) It's okay. It's all right. Actually, because God does say that in there is safety in a multitude of counselors. So we all need some place and we use the term a whole lot. I know you've heard it, a safe place, a safe space, but I I can't, um, I can't stress that enough. Mm. Safe. It must be safe. And sometimes, sometimes um, that leader doesn't feel that there's a safe space where they can upchuck, if you will, uh, things that aren't pretty. Things that if people knew, oh, my goodness, (laughs) you know. They would be condemned. <laughs> they would be put out. I mean, you know, but but you need to have a place, a safe and a sacred space and a place that God will. He's already carved out the person that you can talk to. But you have to trust God that he will send you and the right person will come along that you will be able to. And it might mean that, and thank God for, you know, I love, sometimes it can really drive us crazy when it doesn't work well. Like sometimes when I'm on Zoom, because I do grief work and I can do grief work one-on-one. And many of the people that I work with are leaders in in the church and they are believers. Um, But I can work with anyone anywhere. Uh, Thank God 
to Zoom. But when Zoom freezes <laughs> up on me, it makes me crazy. But, uh, but you know, we, we can do that. So a lot of the people that I have worked with, I didn't know them. So I was fairly safe. And then, of course, I had to prove myself that I was indeed safe. And that's one of the things that is so critical. If you're going to be emotionally honest with someone, there has to be absolute confidentiality. Mm -hmm. And yeah, one one thing that is so uh, uh, dangerous, if if you will, in the church. And um, who was it? Henry Nouwen, who... uh, is a spiritual who writes a lot about spiritual formation. He made the statement that resentment is a hotbed in the church. Mm. Uh, there's so much pain and there's so much unforgiveness. And that's the big thing that we work on um, with grief. And we talk about it so much. And what about me is forgiveness yeah. and how that can be so detrimental to our holistic health, because we're talking holistic health, spirit, soul, and body. And see, in the church, sometimes we will, I've heard of situations where you've got so many church wounds, people leave in the church because of a breach in confidentiality. Right, right. Because we feel like, okay, well, I'm, I, you know, somebody confides in you and, and maybe you say, okay, well, I will pray. I will pray for mm-hmm. you. I sure will. And God forbid that you make what that person said to you a prayer concern <laughs> in the prayer circle. <laughs> <laughs> and even if you don't give a name, and sometimes people will do, oh, we just need to lift up sister so-and-so, uh-huh. lift up brother so-and-so. They are going through. And Lord, we just lift them up. To, we touch and agree. And there you have broken a confidence. Right. And, you know, and so much bitterness, so much resentment can fester in the church. And that's a sad thing. Yeah, this conversation is so good. Um, we might have to have you back in the future, Renee, to talk a little bit more about this. Um, um, I want to I want to help uh, leaders and people here in our avail audience to to know how they can get this book, how they can connect with you. Um, I mean, I mean, honestly, in this short time that we've been talking, I can think of at least three to four things that I want to digest. I want to talk through with some of my team members and, and even just pray through and, and ask the Lord for wisdom. But I think it's so important as soul care providers uh, to realize mm-hmm. that we need care. We need that safe space and place uh, to be able to express mm-hmm. and to be able to unload. Um, and, and, you know, and this is something that is, it's biblical. Uh, there is wisdom in the counsel mm-hmm. of many. I can think of James five sixteen. 16, um, confess your mm-hmm. sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Right. Yes. And uh, the importance yes. of having the right people in our lives. This has been awesome. So Renee, how can people find you online? I know you have a website and then also what about the book? How can they find the book? Okay. Well, first of all, um, to get the book and uh, we did briefly mention the master class, yeah. which includes the book, the study guide and the video. And the video, I have to say this, uh, the video is a um, snippet of recordings that I did with everybody who is in the book. So each chapter. Wow. And uh, I did get a chance to go over who all is in the book, but we just got psychiatrists, wow. chaplains, um, soul care providers. Uh, we've got uh, bishops. We've got pastors. We've got medical doctors. Uh, We've got um, spiritual director. We've got uh, entrepreneurs in the book. And these are all people of faith. So in order for people to identify and to get a little bit more intimate with the people that I interview for the book, you can hear their voices. And so I encourage the masterclass for your team and for teams to go through it together. It would be perfect uh, as team development. It really would. You can get that at release my dream forward slash what dash about dash me 
The book was published by Dream Releases Publishing, Dr. Chan's company. Mm-hmm. So that's where you go to release my dream. And then my website is ReneeHillCarter.com. And so you'll see that. You'll see some other things that I've done at that website that will also uh, speak to emotional and holistic, holistic well-being. Uh, and then my email is ReneeHillCarter at Gmail. So I just welcome people to get in contact with me and ask questions. How can I use, how can I personally use what about me? Um, Tell me more about this grief work that you do. Um, And how can my team, how can a Bible college use this? What about me? The masterclass. So many uses for it. So I would be happy to share that. Yeah. I want to reiterate Renee's website, ReneeHillCarter.com. There's two E's at the end of Renee. So it's R-E-N-E-E. ReneeHillCarter.com. Mm-hmm. And for the for the special bundle, uh, it's why is it a bundle? Because it includes the book, What About Me? It includes the What About mm-hmm. Me study guide, which is kind of like a self-reflection along mm-hmm. the journey of reading the book. Mm-hmm. And then it has the masterclass videos. It's a complete package. You're going to want this, leaders, pastors. It's ReleaseMyDream.com forward slash what dash about dash me. Uh, this is going to be a great mm-hmm. resource for you as a leader. And for those who are leading along with you, you're going to want to reach out for this. Mm-hmm. I will mention mm-hmm. Renee. Uh, we also talk about the avail journal. This is a leadership journal for those of you watching or listening new. Uh, uh, the mm-hmm. avail journal is a quarterly uh, leadership, Christian leadership magazine that comes out. It looks good. It feels good. And it has great content, uh, including uh, writings from amazing leaders and authors like Renee Hill Carter. And uh, if you don't have access to it, we want to offer you a year for free. Uh, availjournal.com. Availjournal.com. First year's on us. Um, and uh, and I'll just say, um, we love having authors and leaders like yourself, Renee, who who are part of this extended family through dream releaser through avail and God is doing great mm-hmm. things. Um, what, what's one final thought or encouragement uh, that you want to leave on the hearts of leaders today? Well, <clears throat> when I retired from the church, I retired in 2015. The one thing that I asked God was to teach me how to rest. <laughs> I didn't know what I was asking. But since that time, he has been teaching me that. And so I want to leave uh, the scripture that speaks so much to that. Uh, so many others, so many, but um, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. Mm. Another translation for be still says cease striving. Wow. Cease striving and know that I am God. And Again, I was just so excited to have uh, an article in this Avail journal, yep. uh, the current issue, uh, and the title was Lose and Be Well. So you, you have to read the article to know what that means, okay? <laughs> but uh, And, and I, ju- I just want to encourage everybody, be still. Slow down. As the people, old folks used to say, there I go with old folks again. <laughs> During a thunderstorm, they would tell us to unplug all electrical devices, go somewhere and sit down and hush, be still. So that's what I encourage us to do Uh, and talk to Jesus and a safe person and then make a paradigm shift in understanding what God is saying when he says, you shall love me with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, as yourself. So I tell everybody, take care to take care of you. This is awesome advice. This is wonderful advice and encouragement. Um, Renee, on behalf of Dr. Chand, uh, Martin Van Tilburg, our whole Avail team, we just want to say we're thankful for you. We honor you for your consistent uh, leadership within the context of the church and the community for so many years. Uh, and we're excited about your new book, uh, praying that the Lord's going to continue to use you and what he's called you to communicate to leaders, pastors, and everybody out there who needs help. So we honor you. We bless you. 
Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Hey, everybody, I hope you've been encouraged by another leadership conversation that's going to help you practically as you lead emotional health, mental health, self-care, soul self-care. It's so important. And we've been honored to have Renee Hill Carter. Uh, As always, it's an honor for me to lead these conversations. My name is Virgil Sierra, lead pastor of Vertical Church, your host here on the Avail podcast. Thanks for connecting. And we hope to have you next time right here on the Avail podcast. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Avail podcast with our guest, Renee Hill Carter. You can find more about Renee at ReneeHillCarter.com. Also check out her book and masterclass bundle at ReleaseMyDream.com forward slash what dash about dash me. For more leadership resources, check us out at TheArtOfLeadership.com. And make sure to claim your free annual subscription of the Avail Journal at AvailJournal.com. As always, I'm your Avail podcast host, Virgil Sierra. Muchas gracias. Thank you for connecting with us to learn the art of leadership here at the Avail podcast. <laughs>